What is the best kind of life insurance? Well, it may help to know there's only two types of life insurance. There's temporary life insurance and there's permanent life insurance. In the temporary category, there's all kinds of term life insurance policies. And in the permanent category, there's whole life insurance policies and universal life insurance policies that are all also classified as permanent. For the purpose of this video, we'll choose one type of life insurance out of each category to qualify that qualifies as best kind of life insurance. Let's get started with the term policies. First, there's guaranteed level term. Guaranteed level term gives you a guaranteed level premium and guaranteed level death benefit for a certain term, usually 10, 15, 20, sometimes even 30 years. It's considered by many to be the most inexpensive way to get life insurance. Next, we have convertible term, which works exactly like guaranteed level term in what I just described with one extra option. You can convert this policy into permanent coverage within the term of the policy. So most people find themselves without insurance when their term insurance expires. If you've converted to permanent insurance, your insurance coverage continues. That's the benefit of this. You're going to pay just a little bit more for convertible term than you would a guaranteed level term. Next, you have a recap term, which is convertible term with an extra option. Okay, the ability to recapture premiums you pay. So when you convert to permanent insurance, usually you can look back. If you do it within five years, you can look back for those five years, recapture the premiums you paid. They're given to you in the form of premium credits, which are then applied to your new permanent life insurance policy. You're going to pay significantly more for this than for a convertible term policy. But it's nice to know you have that option. And finally, yearly renewable term. The premiums on a yearly renewable term policy are going to start out much lower than a level term policy initially. They're going to stair step every year that you renew, though, and become more and more expensive every year. So it's going to far exceed a level term policy premium. That's why most people recognize it as the most expensive type of term life insurance. Okay, we're going to compare all these four types of term life insurance, which are kind of the mainstream available uh, policies. There's variations uh, here and there, but this is basically everything mainstream that you're going to see. Everything else is basically a variation of these kinds of products. We're going to compare these on five categories. Death benefit. Do they offer a death benefit? Do they offer steady coverage during their term? Are they affordable? Do they offer an ability to recover premium? And do they convert into permanent insurance? So let's put the products over here on the left. We'll do the criteria across the top. Number one, death benefit. They all score in this category as they should. They are life insurance. They should have a death benefit. That's good. Do they offer steady coverage during their term? Answer is yes. Guaranteed level term, uh, usually 10, 20, 15 Sometime, uh, 10, 15, 20, sometimes even 30 years. That's the same for convertible and recap. Yearly renewable term doesn't initially look by the, like it would qualify in this category just because the name says yearly renewable. But they come with an, a guaranteed insurability period is what it's called, where you can have the guaranteed right to renew every year for, let's say, 10 years without getting a medical exam. So yes, it would offer steady coverage, guaranteed steady coverage, if you renew your premium like you have the option to do. Affordability, guaranteed level term, definitely makes this category. And convertible level term compares very well because its premium is not much higher at all. Recap term steps up significantly, and yearly renewable term is recognized by many people as the most expensive type of term insurance, so it doesn't make this category. Now, if you were to convert your policy and recapture your premiums, there's a possibility recap term could make this category. And if you just need life insurance for maybe six months or one year while you're transitioning from one group life insurance policy to another group life insurance policy, and you need to cover that gap in coverage with something, yearly renewable term might be a very affordable option, even beating some of these others out. But over the term of the policy, it does not make this category. Is there an ability to recover premiums? Yes, there is. Obviously, recap term will stand head and shoulders above the rest in this category. This is what it's designed for. And convertible uh, level term gives you some ability to recover premium, although it's more limited. When you convert to a permanent policy from a convertible policy, any unused premium dollars that haven't been applied to cost of insurance will be credited to premium credits that can be applied to the new permanent policy. 
So it gives you a little bit of ability to recover premium, but not near what recap term would. And finally, what converts permanent insurance out of these? The answer is convertible level term and recap term only. So if we look at all of these, we've got guaranteed level term, three out of five. Convertible term is five out of five. Recap term, four out of five. It would be five out of five, except for the affordability. Yearly renewable term, two out of five. Okay, very interesting. So let's look at the permanent life insurance side of things now. We've got whole life, we've got participating whole life insurance, universal life insurance, variable universal life insurance, and index universal life. Okay, when you look at these, you can tell the ones that have whole life in their name are related, the ones that have universal life in their name are related. Whole life insurance is, works very simply. It's kind of like guaranteed level term, except it's permanent. You get a level premium, and a level death benefit. Now, whole life insurance also builds cash value, which is something that term insurance doesn't do. Cash value is money that you can access via loan or withdrawal in a whole life insurance policy, and it gets a compound annual growth rate. So your cash value is going to increase until it reaches the amount of death benefit in the policy at either age 100 or age 120. Participating whole life insurance works the same way as whole life insurance. It's just got one extra option, and that is it participates in the dividend. Mutual company, life insurance companies pay dividends to their policyholders because the policyholders are the owners of the company. Stock held companies pay to their stockholders. Okay, Some stock held companies offer a participating product that can participate in some of the profits, but usually those products are found with mutual life insurance companies. Okay, life insurance dividends are tax-free, so it's always nice to be able to participate in those whenever possible. Universal life insurance has cash value as well. It works different than a whole life insurance policy, though. When you pay your premiums, then cost of insurance, policy charges, and fees are deducted from the cash value account, and the remaining... Uh, money in there is your cash value. That's credited with an interest rate by the insurance company. Okay, the insurance company determines what that's going to be when they credit it. Usually they have a guaranteed minimum interest rate as well on these policies, often seen around 2%. Okay, variable universal life works very similar to universal life insurance. The only difference being is that you can divide your cash value up into separate accounts. The separate accounts are kind of like mutual funds within the company. They can be invested in various things, including the market. That's good to remember. Okay, index universal life insurance behaves very similar to universal life insurance as well. How can you guess? Maybe in the name. Okay, the only difference between indexed and universal life insurance is that instead of the insurance company determining the interest rate, the cash value is pegged to an index, okay? That, or actually the crediting interest rate is pegged to an index, and that is paid on the cash value. Usually this rate on all these policies is capped at a certain height, but they also have a guaranteed minimum rate, like I said, of around 2%. Okay, we're gonna put, compare these five policies on these five criteria. Death benefit, do they offer a compound annual growth rate? Do they have a fixed cost of insurance? Do they pay dividends? And are they guaranteed to be sustainable with a level premium? So let's put the products over here on the left. We'll do the criteria across the top again. Number one, death benefit. And they all score. Yes, and they should all score because they are life insurance. And life insurance should have a death benefit by default. Okay, do they offer a compound annual growth rate? Yes, they do. Whole life insurance and participating whole life insurance as well as universal variable and index. The way they offer this compound annual growth rate is different, the universal and the whole life policies, but yes, they all have a compound annual growth rate. Okay, fixed cost of insurance, there's only two. The whole lives are the only ones that have fixed cost of insurance. Universal life insurance policies are built on a chassis of yearly renewable term. Remember yearly renewable term that we talked about? It's the most expensive type of life insurance because of that stair-stepping premium. So that's an increasing cost of insurance policy. And since that's what these are built on, no, they do not have fixed cost of insurance. It's going to increase. Which policies pay dividends? Only one, the participating whole life insurance policy pays dividends. And finally, are they guaranteed to be sustainable with a level premium? 
This, it makes sense that only the whole life score in this category again because of that fixed cost of insurance that they both scored in earlier. Okay, you can have a level premium if you have a fixed cost of insurance. If you have fluctuating or increasing cost of insurance, then you're not guaranteed to always be able to have a level premium. Okay, the only way the universal life insurance policies would be able to sustain a level pre or have a level premium sustain the policy is if the earnings rate was high enough. So if the universal life was credited at a high enough interest rate, if the investments that the separate accounts invested in did well enough in the variable universal life insurance policy, or if the index did well enough and returned high enough that the money coming into the cash value account could offset the increasing cost of the yearly renewable term, then your premium would remain level, okay? If those rates or if those returns are not high enough, then the insurance company can and will bill you for extra premium and your premium will go up. We see that happen a lot right now, especially in this low interest rate environment. If the interest rates are higher, maybe it would be a different story. It's hard to say. All right. So if we arrange these uh, side by side or in a list, we get whole life four out of five, participating whole life five out of five, universal life two out of five, variable universal life two out of five, and index two out of five. Universal life is all related. They all scored very similar. Uh, participating whole life and whole life were scored similar to except for that one participating. So they got the dividend paying one star for the dividend payment. All right, let's look at them side by side, see what our winners are. Best kind of term life insurance in this case is convertible term, and best case, uh, best type of life insurance, permanent life insurance is participating whole life in this case, under these criteria. So, here's a pro tip, real quick, before purchasing convertible term and before purchase, purchasing participating whole life insurance. When you're purchasing a convertible term policy, it's good to know what that policy can be converted into. Some policies can only be converted into universal policies. Some offer the ability to convert into whole life insurance policies. Before you buy that convertible term, you're going to be spending a little bit extra to have that convertibility option. Make sure it some, converts into something that you want to have down the road. Okay, And before buying participating whole life insurance policy, it's good to look at the dividend history of the company. Anybody can or can project to dividends and you can look at those numbers. Dividends are not guaranteed though. So you want to look at the history of the company, which will probably be the best indication you have of whether it's likely they will pay a dividend or not. You want to ask questions like, have they paid a dividend every year? Since when? How many years? Did they ever skip a year? What are their dividends like right now in comparison to what they've been projected? And finally, remember when you're buying a participating whole life insurance policy. There's often riders that can be added to your policy. Riders that will increase cash value, riders that will pay your premium in the event of disability, and uh, riders that will allow you early access to your death benefit in case of illness. So knowing all those options is a pro tip for you when you're buying one of these policies to look and make sure it's something that's going to fit your needs very well. And finally, I want to ask you if you know what kind of life insurance you own right now. If you do, that's great. Most people take care of this at one time, put it in their safe and forget what they own. So if that's you, go to your safe, get out the life insurance policy or wherever you keep it, get it in front of you. With your new knowledge, look through and see what you have. Is it what's going to fit your needs? And if you need a little help looking through it, that's understandable. This is not your profession, most likely, like it is mine, unless you're a life insurance agent watching this, okay? So get an independent life insurance review. Get somebody that knows what to look for to look over your policies, tell you what you have and how it works. We do a lot of independent life insurance reviews and you're welcome to use ours if you want. I'll put some information in the description box so you can, take, so you can uh, see how to get that uh, complimentary independent life insurance review. We'd be happy to review what you have because life insurance is one of the most important asset protection tools, both for you, your family, and it's a good financial tool if you have the right kind of policy. If you liked this video, thought the content was useful, check out one of the other videos on the screen right now. Thank you for watching.